going on, everybody? It is Thursday, May 10th, a.k.a. my anniversary. And uh, I'm much more excited about that than I am of this slate. I don't have really anything else interesting to say in this intro. Uh, Sixers lost last night, and that's kind of a bummer. So there's no basketball until Sunday. Um, that's all I got. Jake, what's going on? What's new? Give me something interesting. Nothing. Happy anniversary. Uh, Thank you. The pitching definitely isn't interesting here. No. Um, got 11K J Hap. Uh, Walker Bueller's 10-5. It's, it's going to be tough. So this slate should be pretty interesting. I don't know where the chalk's going to be for pitching. Uh, some good hitting spots, but... Yeah, this slate isn't the best, I don't think. Now, uh, when I did my first crunch in the morning, I was surprised to see that I got a lot of Caleb Smith. So on days like that, you know, you know what? Tonight might not be the night. Oh, I like Caleb Smith. So, so do I. I didn't expect him to be the guy that was popping up the most for me. Uh, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind Caleb Smith. I don't want him to be the guy that I have all of my stock in. In a, what, one, two, three, four, nine game slate? That's fair. <laughs> I'm happy to have a ton of Caleb Smith in, like, the turbo or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's just get into it. It's uneventful. Although, I guess, in the future, I should just make it seem like every slate is the best slate that's ever happened. Like, no, like we're... giving people the first minute and being like, yo, today sucks. <laughs> well, at least they, they downloaded it. They viewed it already, so... Yeah, that's, that's true. Right. We already got your click. Yeah. Alrighty. First game... Orioles and Royals. Orioles, 4.8 run implied total. Royals, 5.1. It's a 53% chance to win for the Royals. Chris Tillman going for Baltimore. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Uh, this one's not a pitching matchup that I want to have a part of. Uh, I, I much prefer Caleb Smith <laughs> than uh, Chris Tillman or Ian Kennedy. Don't. If anybody rosters Chris Tillman tonight, you've made a mistake. Yeah, Chris Tillman. Um, we say it every time, but he's one of the worst pitchers in the MLB. Continues to get starts. I I don't know why. Like just going by his X ex, XFIP five seven five against righties, six six seven against lefties. He's getting pounded by lefties. Almost fifty five percent hard contact, which is a number I haven't really seen for a sample this big, this late into the season. Um, it's got to be amongst the league leads, if not leading. Uh, so I'm all over these KC bats. Yep. 5.1 run total. I think it should be higher. Like <laughs> they could reach that in the second inning against Tillman if he, he he's so bad. Like he's my favorite pitcher to target against. Um, yeah, and I like targeting. I like targeting against Ian Kennedy too. But um, the Royals are outside of Coors probably my favorite stack on the night i could not agree more um they're just it's just tillman's so bad he's so so bad kansas city made the spotlight stacks uh so you know john jay moose tacos duda all look really good getting the lefty righty matchup uh moose tacos is a spotlight hitter again tonight it's hard to avoid him uh duda just as good of an option Particularly on FanDuel, where he's only 2,500. Um, you just want to get as many bats as you can against Chris Tillman. I like Soler a lot. Salvador Perez looks great on DraftKings. You know, I don't have a problem with Whit Merrifield. It's, you could really go for all of the Royals if you want to. Yeah. I like So, Mustakis, Duda, Salvador Perez, those are my three favorite. But the guys around them, uh, Soler and Whit Merrifield... I like two through six a ton, and they like all those guys could end up on my my only lineup tonight. So Tillman, just no respect for the guy. I think it's going to be another short outing. I think he's going to get pounded again. Um, so love the Royals, and then I'm sure you like some Baltimore bats too, right? Yeah, I do. Uh, Four point eight run implied total for Baltimore is the third. Wait, it's the fourth highest of the slate. Uh, you know, this game, both of these teams have the highest totals outside of course, so it is a game I want to focus on regardless. Obviously, we have a little bit more respect for Ian Kennedy than we do Chris Tillman, but, um, you know, Chris Davis, excellent shot at a dong. Uh, 
you know, Mancini, Jones, Machado, Scope, I'm in for all that. Uh, Pedro Alvarez, even if he's hitting seventh to get the uh, the dual eligibility on DK, I think is okay. He's got a really nice price on on uh, on FanDuel. I, I don't have a problem having a bunch of Orioles. They're so cheap. Again, everybody is under three thousand except for Machado on FanDuel. Sometimes you can't just pass that up. Four point eight run implied total is more than enough. Yeah, I, so I'm on Jones Machado. I love Scope for thirty five hundred on DK. Yeah. And then Chris Davis, I haven't played him one time this year. I think I mentioned I hate playing him on the, the night shift last night. But just looking at how he's been hitting lately, he's been hitting the ball hard lately. And, you know, it's always going to be a struggle for him to make contact. But Ian Kennedy is not a guy that you're going to have a, tr- a ton of trouble making contact against. So I don't mind Chris Davis for 3,100. Sort of changed my tune on him since last night. There we go. That's nice. He probably he he appreciates that. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he's a nice guy. He just, you know, I just never roster him for DFS. No, I understand that. Um, what did I want to look at? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, I like the Orioles. I like the Royals. They'll be. I'll have a lot of both of these teams. Um, I expect them to be relatively popular, although. Uh, Rockies and Brewers, I assume, will be the most ownership on the slate just yep. because of course. So, uh, Orioles and Royals would be my next step down. Uh, it's hard to say much else. They all look like basically both teams the whole way look great. Um, you know, you could really make any stacks you want here. Yeah, I I love this game. Great park, some wind blowing out, seventy five degrees. Two bad pitchers on the mound, one worse than the other. But, uh, yeah, give me some Royals. Give me some Orioles. Yeah, can't go wrong until we find out that it's a one nothing Ian Kennedy shutout or something, at which point <laughs> apparently we went wrong. Yeah. All righty. Yankees and Red Sox. Yankees, 4.7 run implied total. Red Sox, 4.3. It's a 54% chance to win for the Yanks. Uh, CC Sabathia going for New York. Eduardo Rodriguez going for Boston. Um, I'm not looking at Sabathia at all, but I like Eduardo Rodriguez as a pay down option. I pretty much like him every time we, we do this. Um, he's a really nice, like, cheap pitching option today. Uh, scary, though. I mean, Judge Stanton Sanchez for a lefty is not really the three guys you want uh, on the opposite side of you. Yeah, so it's a, um, I think it's a really scary matchup both ways for both these pitchers. I, I mean, I could probably make a case for either one. I think Eduardo has a lot more upside because, yeah, there is a ton of righty power in the Yankees lineup, specifically those three guys, but they do strike out also a lot. So the Yankees are one of the best teams against lefty hitters. I'm not expecting a shutout from Eduardo, but I do like him here for his price. Uh, not expecting a win, but he definitely has some strikeout upside pretty much every time he's on the mound. And he does strike out righties, I believe, a lot more than lefties, just going by some of his percentages, going back to last year. Um, so I like Eduardo. Um, and then Sabathia on the other side. The Red Sox just have been awful against lefties for some reason. It doesn't really make sense to me. Like when you go up and down their lineup, um, so are the Yankees, which is weird. 23rd have, uh, in hard hit percentage. I wonder what they are. In, so in WRC+, plus, the Yankees are... Why can't I find them? I'll beat you to it. I They're 7th. Yeah, yeah. They're 7th. So, I mean, just like overall, they're, the Red Sox are 29th. They have a 73 WRC+, plus against lefties. But like JD and Hanley and Mookie Betts... They should all be smoking lefties. I know Eduardo Nunez and like Devers, Moreland, okay. But those three guys should be able to make up for some of that. Um, and I think they will by the time we get to the end of the season. But like you could make a case for Sabathia as a super low-owned tournament play just because of how bad the Red Sox have been against lefties. Yeah. Um, yeah, my focus would be on Rodriguez, and I won't have like a terribly large amount of him. He's the. I just want to make sure I get this right because it's so many. He's the 
13th most expensive pitcher on FanDuel, which is kind of wild. Um, 12th on DK. So I'll have, you know, 5% or something like that of Rodriguez. I won't. I know that I won't have any Sabathia. So go Red Sox, I guess. Are you yeah, looking at any is, bats here? Uh, yeah, definitely. I just want to say one more thing about yeah. Rodriguez. This is a... This is like the perfect spot to use a guy like Eduardo Rodriguez. Super volatile. He's cheap, and I don't think he's going to be chalk. So, yeah, like, if he blows up, you're not going to get killed at 6,700 or 7,100 on FanDuel. Um, you can still make that up. But when he's 9,500 and gets blown up and he's 50%, you're done. So this is the type of spot where I'd like to use a guy like Eduardo Rodriguez. That's a great point. Um, I had him a lot. I think it was his last start. It could have been the start before that where uh, it didn't go very well for him. Me too. And yeah. And I he had some ownership, which was rough to say the least. Mm -hmm. Was it the last start? I think no. it was two starts ago. Yeah. I don't think people were on him last start. Uh, he had five. Was, well, he gave up five earned and six in his last start, but he also had ten Ks, so that kind of offsets it. But the start before that was the four inning, five run game. That's the one we were talking about. Yeah, that one yep. went uh, not well. Yeah. So I like the the three guys that I think should be good against lefties: Mookie Betts, Hanley, and JD for the Red Sox. I'm not in love with the full stack just because CC, in his later years, has done a good job at limiting hard contact and just surviving for the most part um and then on the yankees side it would be the three big guys once again sanchez judge and stanton yeah i'm with you uh stanton in particular um i've just been i've been really liking he's i've been using him a lot as a one-off over the past couple days i think his price is just too low um grades out as a really nice value particularly getting that righty lefty matchup I don't use Sanchez as much as, like, I probably should, mostly because of the volume that I play on FanDuel. He's less important without the catcher spot. But Judge, Stan, and Sanchez would be my focus if I were grabbing anybody from the Yankees. Mm -hmm. But I don't see either of these teams as uh, people I'm looking to stack all that heavily. I'm surprised that I don't like the Red Sox more. I think it, I, I don't really know what the issue is outside of maybe the implied total. Um, I would have thought that Betts, Hanley, JD, and Bogarts would have graded out kind of nicely for me. Uh, that's more of a DK thing than a FanDuel thing. Um, so yeah, uh, oddly enough, I'm probably not going to be on the bats all that much here. I'll probably regret that. <laughs> just Stanton, just like looking at his his bad ball logs lately. He's been crushing uh, the ball. Yeah, he's hitting like 115 mile an hour ground outs so he like he's just hitting everything hard um so i expect him to continue to hit the ball hard uh when he makes contact and the demise of john carlos stanton was a little bit overstated after those couple what was it four or five strikeout games yeah i mean that's early in the happen. season he's also going to hit a couple moon balls yeah he's also going to double dawn five times as much as he's going to do that so Sabathia this year, 139 ERA is just crazy to look at at the surface. People think that's probably good. 23 to 5 strikeout to walk ratio is nice. He's got a 211 BABIP. That is going to come north in a hurry. The Red Sox are the type of team that can make that go to 300 in one game. <laughs> For sure. XFIP is 444. Like, he's getting by on smoke and mirrors in his first six starts. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Smith is obviously not this good, but uh, he is good at limiting hard contact, which I don't love stacking guys against him. Um, I just never have for the last couple of years. It's just burned me in the past, and the numbers sort of support that. He's given up one earned run in his last four starts. <laughs> oh, I'm starting I to talk he, myself into the Red Sox. I bet he gives up an earned run tonight. That's my hot take. Well, two of his starts, he gave up runs, just no earned runs. So, oh, uh, don't be too confident. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm slowly talking myself into a Red Sox stack because I really don't like Sabathia. But as of right now, in my first draft of everything, 
I basically had no bats in this game and just some Eduardo Rodriguez. That's all I got. Blue Jays yep, and Mariners. Blue Jays, 4.7 run implied total. Mariners, 4.0. 58% chance to win for the Jays. Uh, J.A. Happ going for Toronto. Mike Leak going for Seattle. I'm not looking at Leak at all here. I like Happ a little bit on FanDuel. Um, I like other guys more than him, so I'm not expecting him to be crazy high-owned. And then uh, on DK at 11,000, He's probably not a guy I would end up with a ton of either. But on DraftKings, I'm not sure that I like any pitchers. So I'm anxious to see what you think about Hap tonight. Yeah, the, the pricing's tough with Hap. 11K, where I, he's got very little strikeout upside based on what he's done. So the Mariners rank second to last in strikeout percentage against lefties this year. Um, just over 18%. They've got a, they're just an above or below average matchup for Hap, I should say. They're an above average team against left handed pitchers. Like, I think Hap can pitch fine here, but you're just not getting the upside. I think there are a bunch of guys that are priced lower than him and some significantly lower on DraftKings that have a lot more theoretical upside. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, Completely respect what Hap has done. There are two guys I like against him, and you could probably guess it's Cruz and Hanniger. Yeah. But I, like, I'm not stacking against him for sure. I no. I think he's like what he's done is pretty real. I mean, the strikeout numbers are a little bit inflated, but he looks really good. Yeah, like I said, I'll have a little amount of Hap. I won't have any leak. The only thing that I'd really be looking at here is a is a small Blue Jay stack. <laughs> oh so, yeah. Granderson, Solarte, Smoke. You know, I like Donaldson pretty much always. Um, you know, I'd rather have a righty-lefty matchup for Teoscar Hernandez, but I think that's fine. Uh, Russell Martin looks okay if you need a catcher at 3,000. Um, Blue, J- Blue Jays' bats are pretty much my focus here, outside of a smattering of Hap. Yeah, I'm all... I'm, I'm loving all these Blue Jays, so... Like, I thought Teoscar was much better against lefties, but he's got a 49% hard hit rate against righties. Ooh. Uh, yeah. And then Solarte, I like a ton in the middle of that lineup. Donaldson, of course, can hit righties. Um, so outside of the Royals and Coors Field, Blue Jays would be my, my next favorite stack. I don't think Leak is any good. Nope. He's giving up a ton of hard contact to righties, and it's not like he's some good pitcher against lefties either so like these switch hitters smoke solarte granderson up top although if the blue jays blue jays are sharp they probably will have granderson later in the lineup they should be stacking up the righties earlier um but russell martin for 3k is a guy i'm interested in all these blue jays really i'm not a mike league fan granderson is only 2700 i absolutely love him tonight on fanduel to just amazing price I can't get yeah. enough there. That's that's an awesome price. I'll have Granderson uh, as a one-off in some spots if he is slotted in the leadoff spot here. Yep. Not too much else, though. Uh, and, yeah, Cruz is a fine one-off play always against a lefty. Yep. All right, Marlins and Braves. Marlins, 3.7 run implied total. Braves, 3.9. It's a 53% chance to win for the Braves. Caleb Smith going for the Marlins. Mike Fultonevich going for uh, Atlanta. I like both of these guys on FanDuel. They're only separated by $100, so I'd be fine using Smith or Fulte. Uh, on DK, uh, Fulte is $2,200 more expensive than him, so mm. I would actually prefer Caleb Smith to, to Fulte on DraftKings. I probably wouldn't use... Um, that much faulty at all. Caleb Smith is a guy that I think is going to be uh, pretty popular for me at least today. Yeah, I I'm a big fan of Caleb Smith just in general, and so f- some of the reasons why he's got a 12.4 percent swinging strike rate, 31.4 percent O swing percentage, so he's getting guys to chase a little bit, uh, and then he's got three different pitches 
that are in the top 25 in whiffs per swing, and that's at a 50 pitch minimum this year. Like he seems like he's got three good pitches. They're all making guys miss. The problem is the matchup with the Braves. They don't really strike out against lefties. I believe the lowest K percentage against left-handed pitching this year. Uh, one of the highest WRC pluses in all of the MLB. Actually, now they're the highest updated from last night. So the Braves are a really tough matchup. Um, I think Smith has the talent to overcome it, and he's going to be probably pretty low owned. Yeah. Um, and it's a good price for him. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't go all in on on Caleb Smith if you had multiple lineups to work with, but he might end up on mine just because I think he's really talented. Yeah, I'm with you. Both teams under four for the implied total uh, has me pretty interested in the pitching. Uh, it's just Fulty's price on DraftKings is is not really playable in my opinion. Um, he, he'd be much more of a fan duel guy. I like both of them. That you know they both have swing and miss stuff. I don't really find a lot of fear in either one of the lineups. So I don't have really anything from a bats perspective in this game. I'd be much more likely to just use the pitching. If I, mean, I did I, need to pick a bat, you know, Freddie Freeman is not a guy that I want to be looking at normally in a lefty-lefty matchup. And he's really, like, Albies and Acuna, I guess I like them, but they're expensive now. On FanDuel, they are not cheap. So I don't like a stack of the Braves, so I don't really get to these guys all that much. Yeah, their prices are inflated, especially on DraftKings. 4700 for Acuna. Um, Albies is 5200 yeah. Uh, is that a typo? Like, he, I mean, I know he's been good, but 5,200 is pretty crazy. He's um, really expensive. Yeah. So maybe I just don't realize how good he's been, uh, judging by the results. But Well, he's slugging uh, 579 on the season. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, um, he's got 10 I mean, dongs, 24 RBI, and 34 runs scored. Like, he's just. Yeah. Okay. So he's. Second is baseman. That good. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't. I'm not getting to a brave stack. I have a lot of respect for Smith. Uh, I'd much rather play Smith than any of these Braves hitters, but it'd probably be Acuna for me or $2,600 Tyler Flowers <sighs> you beat me if to he's it. in the lineup. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, he looks. Tyler Flowers looks like a really nice, like if you need a one-off catcher and someone cheap, he's got the righty-lefty matchup if you want to take advantage of it at that price. Yeah, Braves uh, just have the sickest catchers, like Flowers and Suzuki. Um, they need to find a way to get both these guys in the lineup, I think. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. What's their record? Ooh, 21 and 14. Nice. Top of the NL East, people. They're good. Their we'll offense is, Their offense is really good. Yeah. My boys at the top. It's a scary one, two, three. Oh, yeah. I, I wish I liked Marcakis. Now. <laughs> I liked him 10 years ago. Not so much now. Uh, we're not looking at any uh, Marlins bats, right? Um, I mean, you can play Boar, yeah. but I probably won't get to him. Sounds good. All right, this is the one people are going to want to hear. Although, there's not really that much interesting shit to say. Rockies and Brewers. Rockies, 6.1 run implied total. Insane. Brewers, 5.2. It's a 58% chance to win for the Rockies. Uh, German Marquez going for Colorado. Julie Chassin going for Milwaukee. You don't want the pitching here. Uh, you want the hitting. And honestly, I don't have anything very specific to say outside of all 16 guys in the lineup. I, hell, I would probably take one of the damn pitchers if I could get their hitting stats. <laughs> that's how big of a that's how big of a total there is in this game. Uh, I like everybody. Literally everybody. All 16 dudes can be in my lines and will be in my lines. Uh, they'll be the two highest owned stacks, I would imagine, by far. Um, so guys like Blackman, Cargo, who's a spotlight hitter, Gerardo Parra. I think Trevor Story is still underpriced. You know, Christian Yelich, Travis Shaw. All these guys are getting the benefit of like lefty-righty matchups. And that we're not even talking about all the other guys that look great. But it's just it's the spot tonight. Yeah, and I'm I mean I love all these lefties on both sides. You got two righty pitchers. Um, Marquez throws that curveball that doesn't really work in Coors. Chassin has a slider um, 
that's his like breaking ball and then um, a sinker which I mean the slider might be okay but the sinker is not gonna work like it should or like it does in a, in a normal park so I'm looking at a lot of the lefties um, so Blackman cargo para are my favorites for Colorado but I'm not leaving out like Arenado or LeMahieu or even Ian Desmond uh, for the, the Rockies side yeah and then I love Yelich and Shaw on the Brewers side, but they'll probably be the two highest owned. Um, I mean, you said it. You can play pretty much all these guys. It's You just know what you're getting into as far as ownership goes because there isn't really a bunch of pitching spots to pay up for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I love both sides of it. If the Brewers are going to be significantly lower owned, then I would probably lean towards the Brewers stack. Same. Um, but as of now, like... To just Yelich is probably one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. Fifty-two percent hard contact against righties this year. He's just hitting everything hard, squaring it up. Um, could be my home run call tonight. There you go. Uh, Cargo is only three thousand on Fanduel, which I mean is going to make his ownership really preposterously high. Uh-huh. Uh, by able, like, if you get Cargo in your line. Para is only three thousand. Lemayhew only thirty six hundred. You get enough savings just from those guys to be able to roster Blackman and Arenado, and like not have to do anything weird. And there's not really any pitchers. Nobody's over ten k on Fanduel, so you can pit, pretty much get whoever you want in any sort of order. That's what makes it a little bit more ridiculous. Yeah, it's, um, they it's should not- be the they're they're the most likely team to you know have a stack to lead in scoring tonight, but. I think their ownership will make that sort of a less appealing play um, because it's just they're going to be so... like Carlos Gonzalez's ownership on FanDuel is going to be through the roof on a nine-game slate for an outfielder. Same with same with DK, too. I mean, he's he's 4K. Yeah, it's it's insane. Absolutely insane pricing. You're going to be able to fit in a bunch of these Coors bats like... There's guys like Erod, and there's some other cheap pitchers that we like, like Caleb Smith, and um, you're just going to be able to do it pretty easily. So it's something to keep in mind as far as ownership goes, especially on Cargo and Yelich and Shaw. They'll be three of the highest owned players on the slate, I think. Yeah, for sure. But they're all really good plays too. So yeah, you want to differentiate. It's hard to also. talk about stuff like that. It gets into game theory and into like individual strategy and the the game selection that you're playing mm-hmm. more so than anything else. Yep. I mean, without question, they're great plays, but you need to balance that in some way. Uh, if you're yeah. playing in like a higher dollar GPP, um, you know, finding a stack more like I don't know the Blue Jays or the Orioles, uh, you might get more bang for your buck from a dollar and ownership perspective. Yeah, agreed. All righty. Diamondbacks and Nats. Uh, Diamondbacks, oh, I lost it. 4.3 run implied total. Nats, 3.7. It's a 57% chance to win for the D-backs. Uh, Zach Greinke going for Arizona. Tanner Roark going for Washington. Grinky, most expensive pitcher on FanDuel. Not a guy that I'm probably going to get to with any sort of regularity. And uh, Tanner Roark just sort of exists tonight. Not anybody that I'm really looking at. Uh, I, I don't have much to say about Grinky. I'm not really wild about him, but he'll have some ownership just because of who he is. Yeah, I'm. I'm not crazy about Grinky either. I think he, I. I don't think he'll have that much ownership on DK because people are going to want to pay up for bats, and it's a not a good matchup for Grinky. He could overcome it, but he is giving up a lot of hard contact, which worries me. Um, and then this Nats lineup is just really tough. With Rendon back, just another really good hitter in there. Um, I don't think Trey, or I don't think Granky is good at holding runners. But let me check on that. Uh, oh wait, yeah, he actually is. So I'm thinking of someone else. Um, but great work, Trey Turner. Yeah, Trey Turner can steal. <laughs> on anyone so he sort of breaks that that model yeah uh bryce harper leading off i don't know i 
I think I'm going to stay away from Granky. There's a guy that I like that's his exact same price on DK. So, Man, I wonder who that's like going to be. Yeah, the only guy that's 10-2. We'll talk about him soon. Yes, we will. Um, I don't know. I And then Roark on the other side, I... Like, you can target lefties against him, so Descalso and um, Alex Avila if he's in the lineup. But I just don't really have much in this game that I like. Now, I like a little bit of the Diamondback side. Uh, Peralta and Descalso, if we're getting two lefties at the top of the order. Um, Peralta 3,000 on FanDuel, Descalso 2,800. Uh, it's just a, a bargain price for the one and two hitters. You know, Diamondbacks total is relatively low, but like still functionally okay. Um, they'll have almost no ownership, I would imagine, just because of the way the games are shaking out. So it wouldn't take much exposure uh, to some of the guys on on Arizona to um, to have like a relatively unique stack. So if you went like Peralta, Descalso, Goldschmidt, and Pollock. Um, you know, not a lot of people are going to be on that stack. It's relatively cheap. You can still do whatever you want from a uh, a pitcher perspective, and you get the benefit of Arizona, which is you know a little bit of a hitter's park. Yeah, I think it still is a hitter's park. Maybe not as good of a hitter's park as we've seen in the past with this new humidor thing, um, which I guess we won't really know how that affects the ball until years down the road so we don't really know yeah right now um but yeah i like descalso and peralta and then goldschmidt uh, did he bust out of it the slump last night oh, not look. that that really matters well whether or not i'm gonna play him but Let's see. pollock's been hitting really well um he's just super expensive so this will be a really low owned stack if i was gonna go to a stack in one of these games it would be the arizona top four um, but I'm not really crazy about it. I just have so many others that are ahead of it. I agree. Uh, Goldschmidt, one for four with a walk and an RBI, so no. Okay. But well, I think his hit, yeah, his I mean, hit was getting, uh, yeah. pretty important from like a win percentage added standpoint. Not that yeah, that's something and, I'm ever looking at, but if you're looking for game context, uh, he had the highest for any hitter on Arizona, oddly enough. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's. I never really factor in like hot streaks. I just want to no. see guys that are hitting the ball hard. Yeah. Um. So. Now, if I'm, I'm looking good at Goldschmidt right now for his performance, I'm checking to see. Like, I'm trying to figure out if I think he's hurt. <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah, if somebody's just hitting the ball well, that that doesn't matter. But when they're not hitting the ball well, you kind of need to pay attention a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right, Angels and Twins. Angels, 4.3 run implied total. Twins, 3.7. Um, it's a 56% chance to win for the Angels. Garrett Richards going uh, for the Angels. Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Um, these guys are both just there for me. Uh, they'll have a little bit of... I'll probably have a little bit of both of them, you know, in the, like the 4%-ish range. I don't have much else to really say. That It's kind of just uneventful. I don't really like the total. That's kind of in the middle ground. I don't really like their prices. That's kind of in the middle ground. So they, they just kind of exist. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, I think I think both of these guys will get ownership on DK. Yeah. People love playing Barrios. They're going to see all these righties. And I think people will talk themselves into Barrios. But like the Angels are under 20% Ks against righties this year. Uh, 112 WRC plus. They're just a good team, and the righties are not your average righties, especially Trout. Kinsler hits righties really well, and then down the line, if you've got Otani and Valbuena, it's it's not an easy matchup for Barrios, yeah. and his price sort of reflects that on DK. Yeah. So I mean, I get taking a shot on him, but I, I won't be playing Barrios. Uh, I'd rather target against him with Otani and Valbuena and Trout. I really won't have anything in this game. I don't really like the hitters or the pitchers. Uh, this will basically be my I hope nothing happens in this game of interest. Yeah, me too. I, could, I mean, Garrett Richards, he's... I mean, I like playing him in general, but 8,900 against the Twins. Yeah. Um, do you think he's going to get ownership? I, I think he will. Um, like, that run total is really low. Yeah, he'll... 
Honestly, it, it's really going to be a lot about how popular is Walker Bueller. True. Because yeah. I don't think... Uh, man, I don't know. It, uh, DK is really tricky to me tonight. I can't get a feel of it. Like, McCullis, Fulte, Richards, Berrios. Uh, like, all of those guys I can't really parse out. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I don't think that Garrett Richards will have that much ownership. I'm anxious to see what we have him at. Okay. Yeah, because he had a he had a really good start against the Mariners last time out. Six and two thirds, eight Ks, and then more importantly, thirty six percent O swing percentage, sixteen point three percent swinging strike rate, and that's against the Mariners. And that's a team that I really respect against right handed pitching. Um, they don't strike out a lot, and he had eight Ks. So Richards has really good stuff. If he can put together a nice start here, you he might need him yeah. at 8,900. Like, I don't know. The Twins are a really tough matchup, though. A lot of lefties. Um, just, like, pesky lefties like Rosario and Maurer and Morrison can hit for power and Grossman, too. So, I think I'm off Richards for now. Uh, that might change by the time we get to the live stream. I'll say this. On my first crunch in FanDuel... I had 1% total ownership for the Angels hitters, none for the Twins, and no Richards or Berrios. So I would make some tweaks and get a little bit of uh, of Richards in, you know, just to have a little bit of exposure. Mm. But this is not the game where uh, I'm naturally grabbing hitters and pitchers. So that's all I got. Yeah. This that's one's fair. a little different. Dodgers and Reds. Dodgers 4.2 run implied total. Reds. 3.0, which is just shockingly low. 64% chance to win for the Dodgers. Walker Bueller going for LA. Tyler Molly going for Cincinnati. I mean, Bueller's my dude, I guess. I'm going to have a bunch of them. Uh, I just I don't see the, really the choice, particularly on FanDuel, where he's only the fourth most expensive pitcher. Um, he'll allow you to have whatever stacks you want. Uh, on DK, it's a little different because he is 10-5, second most expensive pitcher on the slate. Um, I think he'll still be the most owned pitcher of the day. Uh, would you agree or disagree there? Uh, I agree, and I think that's kind of a mistake. Well, on DK, I think it's a mistake. I get it on FanDuel, 8,600, like not even one of the most expensive pitchers. Um, you know, he... He's not getting the swinging strike rate and the chases and stuff like that and the whiffs that I'd like to see for a 10-5 pitcher. And he's going to be chalk, so I, I can't do it for Bueller right now unless I'm just completely missing something. He like The results have been good. The run total against him looks really good. Three runs for the Reds. Um, and I, I don't know. I think I'm just fading the ownership here and um, I don't love everything I've seen from him, and I just prefer a guy that's cheaper than him on DK. So nothing bad to say about Bueller besides I think he, his results are a little bit inflated based on some of his advanced stuff, but um, he's a fine option. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I, I totally get it. He hasn't been going – it's not like he's been going deep into games or anything, so – you know, there's some hesitancy from me. Uh, I just can't get over the price of 8,600 on FanDuel. Um, he's got he's got an enormous projection for me tonight, and uh, I'll end up with he'll be my probably my highest on pitcher unless I look at ownership projections and see that it's like really ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Hitter wise. I like Jock Peterson and Cody Bellinger a little bit. Peterson is only 2,500 on FanDuel. Um, he's a guy that I'll have as like a one-off outfielder, but I don't really have any hitting here. Um, essentially zero ownership to Dodgers or Reds bats. Reds in particular, they're uh, to me they're not rosterable. Yeah, I'm not really on the Dodgers. I can make a case for Bellinger because Molly's getting hit hard. Is it Mall or Molly? Molly. Okay. Yeah, and then I go as far to say I have interest in Molly. Um, I'm just really impressed by what he's done over his last three starts. Outside of the one against the Braves, they don't really stick out. He had 11 Ks against Atlanta. 
went six innings in both starts against the Twins and the Marlins, which are not super easy matchups from a K perspective. And then good swinging strike rate, good whiff rate. Uh, I think he's top 50 in whiffs, so that puts him in the upper fourth in the MLB. And then, I don't know, I'm not super scared of the Dodgers. Um, two, three, four will be tough for him if you have Jock, Grandall, and Bellinger. Right? So that's going to be a tough stretch for him. Yeah. But if he can navigate those three guys or just limit the damage, 7,600, he's going to have no ownership. Um, I like him. So he's going to be one of the guys I consider tonight. He scares me. He, yeah, he's scary. He's a GPP only play. Um because I can see those three guys just teeing off on him. Highest home run per fly ball rate in baseball for starters right now. Yeah. Yeah. One and um, a half percent higher than your boy Luis Castillo. Yeah, my boy Luis Castillo dominated, though, there in 81 go. pitches. There you go. Yeah, uh, I won't have any Molly. Um, it's just This one's basically just Bueller for me. Barring any ridiculously high projected ownership, at which point I would... Uh, I would pivot down a bit. Yeah, and one hitter I like for, or well, I like Votto um, and Jeanette a little bit. But if you're looking to target against Bueller, and this will be like a 2% owned player, I think, Eugenio Suarez, um, We like he's a lefty masher, but he's hit righties really well. 46.8% uh, hard hit percentage when I looked last night. That may be updated now. 11.5% K percentage, and then a 283 ISO versus righties this year. And Bueller's been giving up more hard, hard contact to righties this year. So it is a small sample, but if you're looking for, like, the 2% owned leverage play, if Bueller's going to be chalk, I like Suarez. Whew. I'll keep an eye on that one. Yeah. All right, now I'll let you talk about uh, McCullis. Padres and Cardinals. Padres, 3.5 run implied total. Cardinals, 4.2. 58% chance to win. For the Cardinals, Jordan Lyles going for San Diego. Miles McCollis going for St. Louis. Yeah, uh, McCollis is my dude as well. He'll be the guy that I have probably second most on FanDuel. I don't love his price as much on DK where he's actually finally into the 10,000 range. Kind of high. Um, but I like him a lot. He's a guy that I like pretty much every night that he throws. And today will be no different. So tell me why you like McCollis so much. Yeah, his price is skyrocketed. The results haven't been amazing, but he had a really good outing last start. His previous high was 8K on DraftKings. Now he's up to $2,200 increase. Um, but the Padres are amongst the league's worst in K percentage, on base percentage, ISO, and WRC plus against righties. And then I just think McCullis has good stuff. I'm really encouraged by his. 37.6% O swing percentage. That's third in the entire MLB ahead of Chris Sale and Noah Syndergaard and a lot of other big names. Corbin, who's been awesome. Um, and then the quality of contact he's given up is what I like to see as well. 87.2 uh, miles an hour average exit velocity for lefties and 84.3 against righties. So I, I just I think he's worth it. Um, yeah, and look at his face. Like, Did you see that pic? That picture is terrible. I didn't really like. <laughs> Who doesn't want to roster this guy? Uh, uh, probably anyone that lives near a school because he looks like he would uh, be friendly to children with that mustache on. He looks fantastic. If he throws a no hitter, I will grow out that mustache. Um, oh boy! Yeah, you know, that that's just a great look. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you fade a guy like that. Just don't even listen to what I just said and just look at that picture and ask yourself, how can I not roster this guy? Oh, God. He looks like he would complain about a bad call in a beer league softball game. <laughs> no, he, he looks like a stud. He's going to mow down these Padres. He's my number one pitcher tonight. Oh, boy. I love him. I, I saw his, like, baseball reference has his picture as the one with the mustache. I was like, oh, boy, I need to pull that up right now. I don't know. Does he still have it? I didn't watch this. Uh, some of the other pictures on there, he's got, like, a beard or, like, no facial hair whatsoever. So I think he's, he's rotating through everything. I have no idea what he has right now. 
Oh, it looks like he just like he's just got the beard going. So he doesn't look as cool, but still. Oh boy. Anyway, um, I like him. I'll I'll use him quite a bit, and I have essentially no hitting in this game. I'm not trying to have too much in Petco. Cardinals bats like. Matt Carpenter looks really nice at 2700 on FanDuel, 3700 on DK with the dual eligibility. Uh, but I'm just none of these late games are gonna have a ton of hitting exposure for me. Yeah, I might just have a, a one-off here. Uh, Jose Martinez, who's still 3600, Carpenter 37, and then Ozuna for 37. Those are all guys that I like as one-offs. Not really looking to stack. Uh, Lyles is gonna only gonna go a few innings. It looks like three is as far as he's gone this year. Um, so this is gonna be a bullpen game for the Padres, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not targeting any Padres hitters because they're gonna get no hit. But uh, I don't, I don't <laughs> like any Cardinals either. So just those three guys as one offs, no stacks here. If the Cardinals throw a no hitter, but uh, Michaelis comes out, but they throw it as a team. Will you still grow the, the mustache? Uh, well, if he goes like seven and a third or something, and he he's just up to like 112 pitches, then yeah, I guess. But okay. that's not the kind of outing. I'm I'm more expecting a James Paxton, uh, 99 pitch no hitter out of <laughs> Michaelis. Uh, and I don't know if people don't get my sarcasm there. I'm I'm kidding. Like I. I don't actually think McCall's going to throw a no-hitter. I just think he's going to pitch really well, and I think the strikeouts are going to be there for him. All right, people, you heard it here first. Uh, Jake is guaranteeing a no-hitter tonight. Yeah, and guarantee. And grow the mustache to look Come like at me mom. with your pitchforks on Twitter if he doesn't throw a no-hitter. Yeah. I'm really excited now. I've never wanted something to happen so bad because that mustache is going to be outstanding. Yeah, Absolutely it will be. Outstanding. All right, so ran some crunches earlier. We'll look at DK first. I promise you we'll look at FanDuel as well. You don't have to yell at me in the comments today. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Oh, God. I can't do it. I can't forget to do anything ever. I love you people. I'm sorry. I forgot. Uh, give me two pitchers. Let's do... Obviously, Miles what? and somebody. <laughs> yeah, let's do one of the cheap guys. So, like, um, Eduardo. And okay. can you fit Coors in there? I'm sure you can. Uh, yeah. No, well, only one line of cores in the first six lines that show up for him. You can do Orioles and uh, Rockies if you want, but I can I can do like twenty unique lines of those two clowns. We'll see what we get. Yeah. So you can. I mean, you can get it either one side or the other. So Brewers or or the Rockies. Um, I don't know. Oh, I mean, you can go Rockies, Royals. One, two, three, four for the Royals. LeMahieu, Story, Man. Cargo, and Desmond. Yeah. So. That'll oh, be a popular man. line, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't know. It almost. I mean, I like Coors a ton, but I think KC should be up there at least two, three, four, or three, four, five, I should say. Um, so, I don't know. If Coors is going to be like 30, 40%, then I mean, I think KC and Toronto are decent pivots. Agreed. Yeah, you're going to be able to do whatever you want on, on DraftKings tonight, I think, just because of pricing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On FanDuel, um, you know, my focus would probably be on Bueller, but I'm going to look at Jake's boy to start as my primary guy. Um, again, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can go one, two, three, five with the Royals and get a core stack. You can go Jays and Orioles if you want to be different. Um, pricing's just weird. You can have whatever hitters you want tonight. Um, you know, with uh, McCullis being eighty five hundred, like I can get the one, two, three, four on the Jays and the Orioles tonight. That's pretty insane. Yeah, that's I like that. I mean, and I, I, I couldn't get enough of that first line or this lineup, and then, you know, obviously expected scoring is going to be high in any line with the Rockies just because of that implied total. 
but there is a lot to like out there tonight. Um, one of those lower, one of those non-core stacks is going to go bananas, and that that'll be the driving force to everything mm -hmm. to the top of the leaderboards. Yeah. Anything to plug? Hockey. There's one game tonight. I think I'll have a a showdown article. Uh, I don't even know, you know, just for fun. I mean, I wouldn't blow your bankroll on showdown, but it's just something fun. Yeah. Not that you need anything more to watch it. Game seven between two of the best teams in the NHL, but um, you know, if you're a degenerate, like, come read the showdown article. <laughs> I am not that degenerate. No basketball. We don't have anything until Sunday. That's when the Eastern Conference Finals kicks off. Uh, Western Conference Finals pops off um, on Monday. So the days of uh, two game slates are basically over, people. Which means I really don't want to talk about basketball any longer. So there's that. It's all baseball now. Just get used to our faces. Get used to Jake's face looking slightly different with a mustache. <laughs> My Miles McCullough's mustache. I'm praying for. All right, I'll tell you what. If he if he gets the no hitter, I'll go to the mustache as well. All right, I got you. That'll be just an amazing gift to my wife on this lovely fourth anniversary of ours. If Miles McCullough throws a no hitter. I'm gonna only have a mustache. She'll love it. We'll make sure if this happens, uh, we'll get her on here to. Uh, rate our mustaches so there's yeah. like a point one percent chance of this happening but you know if it happens it happens maybe maybe i'll go complete game shutout if if he does that then yeah you know, it doesn't have to be a no hitter he can give up a hitter too man at the rate you're going you'd be like hey, he can go six six innings three earned <laughs> six just strikeouts a, just a quality yeah. start all yeah. i need is a quality start <laughs> <laughs> maybe they'll talk me into that on the live stream Ooh, i hope so i will not be around for the live stream tonight uh, that's all I got. Um, check out all the baseball content, spotlight hitters, pitchers, stacks, you know, all the good stuff. Subscribe to the channel, like us and follow us on YouTube or Twitter. Um, check out all the, the unique content that uh, Osimo has put out himself. Three very specific strategy articles over the last three days based on uh, pitchers or hitters or stacks likelihood to be the highest scoring things on the slate and how that sort of relates to ownership. Uh, nobody's talking about this kind of stuff. Um, those are articles that are up on our, our premium section that, you know, you don't find that sort of information anywhere. Trust me, I've looked. Uh, I highly recommend checking that sort of stuff out. Not just because I work here, but, you know, a little bit because I work here. No, they're awesome. Yeah. I watched that one that they just put out last night with Chris and Alex Osimo. Um, so, like, you're right. It's not – you're not getting that anywhere else from one of the top DFS players in the world. Yeah, he's not just, He's not giving out, you know, two picks in the – like, we have uh, two videos out, interviews with Chris and Alex. Uh, there will be a weekly thing for all of our subscribers, but we had another one go up yesterday. Uh, yeah, he's – it, this is it's a way bigger discussion than just like I like this team I like this guy today way deeper than that and mm -hmm. it's it's interesting and refreshing to see a perspective like that because you don't get that in this industry all that often so check that out um, if you're a premium subscriber if you're not what are you doing go subscribe right. yep and uh, we will talk to you again in the morning happy anniversary wife Bye. Happy anniversary. <laughs>